Welcome to a new home automation related video and today I'm going to pick up something that I first created a video on back in 2019 when EVLink came out with the EVLink camera app which was an easy way how you can turn an old mobile phone such as this one into a webcam. So what you see here is uh, I have a an Android app running on this older Android phone which is using the camera to turn that phone into a webcam and that integrates into the EVLink application so as you can see I have a new sort of like camera in the list of devices and I can look at the feed directly on my phone as well so basically if you have an old Android phone lying around at your home you can just easily turn it to a webcam without any additional cost and Back in 2009, this uh, application was like, you know, zero point something version. And um, what I got from EVLink is that they will work on this application if there is a need, if people like it. So today we are at version 1.2, which means that probably many people like this application and like how easy it is to extend the capabilities of a simple phone and without you know very little cost you can add a new device to your EV link ecosystem and uh, you know even Samsung is trying to promote the same they have this upcycling uh, program for old uh, Samsung phones where you can just install an application to turn it into a baby monitor or something like that and this is pretty much the same uh, option and even the first version was working you know pretty much okay but then a lot of additional things has been added for example there is a low power mode so you can uh, tell the app to turn the screen all the way down to save battery there is an option to create local recording as well so if you want the, uh, the phone to also store the recording you can do that as well it is also possible to view this recording in the app as you can see it here but I can view the recording on my web, EVLink web application as well. So I can use my Windows or Mac uh, laptop to view this feed. And it now also integrates into Voice Assistant. So if you have, a, for example, a Google Home Hub or a Nest Hub or an Echo Show, you can view the feed on your uh, Voice Assistant as well. And there is one additional feature is you can pair a gimbal to the camera and that gimbal can make this phone to also rotate and tilt. So you can use the Bluetooth gimbal. So you can use the gimbal to control the panning and the tilting of the camera. So it becomes like almost like a PTZ camera. If you haven't used this setup before, let me quickly uh, cover the setup. So first of all, you need an old Android phone, which I mean, for me, this is this S7. Uh, and I think it has to be uh, Android 5.0 or above. And then you need to download this app, which is called the EVLink Camera Home Security app. And once you install it, on the logon screen, you have to provide your EVLink account. So it is the same user ID or uh, email address or phone number and the password that you use in the main EVLink app. And once you have done that, you are basically presented with this screen and you are pretty much done because now your phone is now getting registered into the EVLink application. Now you go back to your EVLink app and without doing anything, the new device is going to appear in the list of devices. So for example, you can see that I have this S7 phone and you just click and you wait for a couple of seconds and then the feed is going to appear like that. And if you look at the application on the EVLink app side, you have a couple of options. So for example, you can turn on the voice so there is two-way audio supported, so you can turn on the speakers, so you can hear what is your phone is recording, and you can also use the talk feature, and you can talk through. Uh, what I found in my testing, that the, the audio which is coming out from the phone is, is actually quite loud, but it definitely works. And you can also switch between the two different streams, whether you want the HD or a um, SD stream. You also have controls for pan and tilt, well, I don't have a Bluetooth gimbal, so it doesn't work for me, but you have these options as well. And if you go to the settings, um, you, you find the basics like rename the, uh, the device, you can change the location, and well, that's pretty much it. If I come to the EVLink camera application side, you have an option to turn on the low power mode. 
that basically just dims the screen to the lowest possible setting so it almost appears that the phone is off but actually it's not and if you double click on the screen it comes back up but even without activating the low power mode it's going to act activate automatically after three minutes of inactivity the next is the local recording so as i said you can turn on the local recording you can also change the uh, local recording settings so depending on how much memory you have left on your phone or the SD card which is inserted on the phone it calculates what is the maximum amount of time that it can record and it's like a dash cam so it's going to record short segments and then once the memory is full it's going to override the last uh, segment so for example at the moment it's set to 60 hours so if I enable recording I would always have a footage of the last 60 hours what happened um, you know in my room if I go further into the settings you can change whether the uh, the app should use the front and a back camera whether the microphone should be uh, activated uh, an overheat protection should be activated I mean I'm running this for a couple of hours now and um, while yes I mean I can feel that the phone is getting I mean it's not hot but it's warm around the camera I don't know what's actually inside the S7 around the camera but I'm guessing you know probably the processor is running because it's uh, sending the video over in the internet yeah so it, it gets a little bit warm but the other thing I have tried is I had this phone plugged in and it is able to maintain 100% battery charge so with the you know the low energy mode it is definitely consuming less than what the charger can provide and the, the last option is the pair with Bluetooth accessory and that's the Bluetooth gimbal that you can pair so you can enable the PTZ function or a PT function and that's all about the settings and the last thing is just the profile where you can read FAQs you can download the actual EV link app which I have running on my other phone and it shows you the version information so there is not an awful lot that you can do but what you don't really want to do a lot more and just as I was recording this segment I got a message saying that my S7 phone is too hot that's probably because I didn't turn off the low power mode so maybe I should do that now to well to reduce the power consumption at least by not running the screen at full brightness and if you want to use the Google integration or the Alexa integration you can just uh, tell the wake word and say show and the name of the device so I used S7 phone so I'm just going to say you know show the S7 phone and uh, what I found is that um, uh, also in the app and also here in the uh, uh, on the Google device as well is that the video is really responsive sometimes even like a regular IP cameras have more delay than uh, you know this device so definitely the the way they are streaming the video is you know is pretty good and as I said you can use your laptop to also view the video feed so that works on Windows or as a Mac laptop as well because you only need an internet browser so you open web.evlink.cc and you can log into your evlink account with the same user ID and password and then your camera is also going to be visible there and if you click on that it's going to show you the feed as well and just to show you that it's not only restricted to your local internet I have turned off the, the Wi-Fi on my phone so it's running on my mobile internet and as you can see I'm still getting the feed from the camera in summary I'm very happy with this option and the thing that I can reuse and repurpose my old mobile phones uh, to work as a camera and well I don't really have to do anything just download the app and if you are already set up for EVLink then it's literally just that you could just add it as a new device uh, what I also like is even if you have like an old phone that is probably going to be a very decent uh, camera or a very decent uh, you know um, lens compared to some cheap IP cameras so you might even get much better images and resolution than just uh, some really really cheap IP cameras so that is something to consider as well of course I, I don't know how good it is if you are running uh, like a phone you know 24 7 with the screen and the camera and everything turned on so for that reason I think this is probably more suitable as a temporary solution so let's say you have some builders at home that you want to monitor or you want to monitor your cat or you are going on a short trip and you don't want to buy an IP camera but you still want to do some monitoring this is an ideal solution for that something for a temporary basis I would say 
EVLink markets this solution as like a baby monitoring solution, which I think it's a good option as well. But also keep in mind that most baby cameras and also IP cameras, you know, professional IP cameras, they usually have IR diodes so they can make good nighttime footage whereas most of the phones are not designed to be run uh, in the night and they don't have a lot of you know, low light quality. So probably in the evening, you're not going to see much using uh, like a general mobile phone. I would say there is one caveat to this solution. If you are a reg regular EVLink user with a, like a basic account, you can have one of these uh, phones. So you can have one phone uh, set up for the same account. So you have one cameras. But if you upgrade to one of the paid services, you can have up to five or unlimited number of cameras. But I think if you are thinking about this sort of temporary solution, you know, having one camera with a free account is probably going to be sufficient. If you are interested in this, I'm going to leave all the relevant links in the video description. But I think that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.